Hi, sweet friends. Welcome back to Very Cherry Cakes. And this is episode number two of our Let's Talk Cake series. And in this episode, I'm going to tell you what I did to promote my business that actually helped me get loyal clients and the clients that I wanted and appreciated me. And as you can see, we do have some guests in the background because it is October. So we went ahead and decorated the set for Halloween. So if you're ready to hear what I did to promote my cake slash sweets business and actually worked just stay tuned and let's get started okay so one of the first things that I did I've actually mentioned it in one of my previous videos which is this one where I tell you my how I started my cake business story and the basic concept of it is promoting myself by word of mouth now if you've watched that video and if you've seen it before you probably remember that I said that I baked 200 cupcakes and I think two or three of my neighbors came. So the concept that I took in when I was trying to promote my business, I was new to the city and I wanted to make sure that my neighbors and that people that were surrounding my area knew that I was baking cakes and that I was selling other sweets products. So the way that I did is when I lived in that community, they had a community Facebook page and what I did is I baked 200 cupcakes I set up an area outside with a table where me and my husband sat for hours and hours. And if you want to hear the whole story, you can go watch the full video. But basically, what I also did besides baking those 200 cupcakes is I printed business cards. So if you wanted to take that same concept, I've seen a few of my friends do this in a way where they go to farmer's markets, for example. You make sure to take your business cards and to each customer that goes buy something from you, give them a few extra ones so that they can tell their friends where they saw you or where they can reach you, which is with that little business card. Um, the way that my business took off from those 200 cupcakes and only three people going is that those three people that went took more than 10 business cards and they distributed those cards to their friends, which in turn, those people gave my information to their friends and their friends and it's how it all started very cherry cakes so remember to promote yourself by word of mouth and anytime when you are starting out or anytime when you have time and the resources to volunteer to bring the desserts don't just bring the desserts and don't just make stuff for free bring the desserts but also promote yourself bring business cards um bring I know that a lot of people are using like QR codes for their Instagrams or their Facebook or their web pages. Uh, make sure to bring the information where people can reach you. Also, think about packaging. When you're bringing free items, free desserts, or free cookies to, let's say, a family event or a work event or some type of event, always make sure that your packaging says where they're from. So let's say that you just get a plain brown or white box or pink box make sure that it has a sticker with your company's logo with your company's name where you can be found on instagram facebook um, i don't know snapchat your website so always make sure that even if you are doing that for free use it as a marketing or promotion opportunity to let people know where they can get those desserts the second thing that i did was making sure to up the skills of the photography that i was putting out so i have mentioned this in the past before in one of my videos but one of my dear friends was the one to point this out to me so when i first started my business i was very happy to have clients i was happy that people were ordering but I did start to notice that after a few weeks or after a few months, my account would just go silent. People wouldn't contact me and I wouldn't have any orders. So one of my friends, uh, we were just hanging out one day, she was looking through my Instagram and she said, your cakes are beautiful, but, and this is the exact picture that she pointed out, which was a picture of a big sheet cake. And on the background, you could see the outlets to my kitchen counter. So I don't think that when we're starting out, we really realize that our photography has to match our 
quality or the product that we're trying to sell even though it sounds like common sense a lot of the times when we start cake businesses or sweets businesses we don't realize that the photography is what sells your product so for example think about your favorite product and think about how it was photographed uh, for example let's say a burger when you see a commercial of a burger, the burger is always beautiful. It's always very juicy. It looks, everything looks like it goes into place, but when you actually go to buy it, it doesn't really match. Um, in this case, however, you have to make sure that what you are putting out on photograph matches what the person receives in person. So what I'm trying to say is that you also can't edit your photos to the point where they're unrecognizable when your client comes to pick them up because that will also be a huge letdown. So you have to make sure that when you're wanting to decide what type of photographs do I want to put out to my client? How do I want to make these desserts look? Be consistent. Be consistent with the quality that you are putting out. So the first things that my friend said and recommended when I first started is she said, if you know nothing about photography, just go with the basics. So pick what type of photo you wanna put out. Do you want a light photograph or a dark background photograph? And I've always gone with the lighter background photograph, but, um, cakes desserts cookies they all photograph beautifully whether you choose a light background or a dark background so just pick one make sure that the background that you are picking is not confusing or is not distracting to the dessert that you are selling so make sure that always when you take a photograph the dessert is the actual center of attention to a customer's eyes and number three make sure that when you are taking the photograph there's light so when i first started i actually just used regular sunlight because that's all i had on hand i now have a few ring lights and a few artificial lighting props that i can use but i will also link a video here of a photographic foot I will also link a video here of a photography basic video that I did years ago. And if you guys want me to remake that video, make sure to let me know in the comments below. But the three things that you need for a good photograph and just basic photograph is a good background, a camera or a phone, whatever you want to use, and light, a big window somewhere where you can take that photo. And I will tell you that the minute that I implemented this on my Instagram and on my Facebook, on my website, which is where I was advertising my work, the calls started coming in slowly. I'm not gonna say that it was like overnight you get thousands of customers, but it did change the type of customer that started requesting things from me. And it also created a brand structure of the type of work that I'm doing, the type of quality. So with photography also comes the reputation of the type of caker, baker, artist that you are. So be sure that you are mindful. And if you need feedback, ask somebody that is unbiased a friend, a family member, what do you think I need to work on in my photos? And if you're just really not sure, just come on here on YouTube and find like photography basics. You will find all kinds of things here on YouTube. And the number three thing that I did is actually telling my customers what I needed or what my, my standards were. So when I first started, um, and my husband remembers this clearly, I'll probably have him on in a video in the future, but when I first started Very Cherry Cakes, I had a few orders the first three or four months, and then after that, it was crickets. I had no orders, uh, nobody was booking anything with me, and I even came to the point of telling him, maybe I should lower my prices, maybe I should just give everything cheaper so I can have more customers, which now in retrospect, looking back, the goal is to have less orders for more money instead of having more orders for less money because it means that you're gonna work more, maybe double or triple for less money than you would if you had one huge cake and that's the only thing you did that week for two to three times the amount. Um, 
So as soon as I said that, he said, no, don't do that. Keep your prices, keep working on your quality, keep working on your photography. So a little um, idea that I got, I'm not gonna say that this is like the most professional way of doing it, but this is what I did and it worked for me. So we talked about it and my husband said, don't just take an order because you're just gonna take the order. Take an order that's going to teach you something, take an order that's going to pay you what you deserve, and if you don't like the order, don't take it. Um, so what I started doing is I, I actually started declining orders that were for the next day. So a lot of us have encountered that customer that calls you up or sends you a message or a text the night before their event and says, hey, I completely forgot about my event. I need a cake for 200 people for tomorrow and my budget is $50. That's um, an exaggeration, but you know where I'm going with this. We all have that customer or those few customers that wanted to do that to us to put you basically in the predicament of, I know this person or I don't know this person, but they're contacting me and I don't have any more orders, so I'm gonna take it. So when I started receiving those messages where people were saying, I need this cake for tomorrow, or I need 300 cupcakes for tomorrow, or three dozen cookies for tomorrow, what I started re responding very professionally was saying, thank you so much for your inquiry. At the moment, Very Cherry Cakes is booked out three to four weeks in advance. Thank you so much, and please let me know if you would like to book in the future, Cynthia. So I started advertising and letting people know that Very Cherry Cakes needed three to four weeks in advance in order for you to secure your spot. So this didn't work as fast in the beginning as I thought it was going to. So it took a few orders, maybe a few declined orders, about four to five declined orders for the word to spread around. And even with my returning clients, I would let them know because my returning clients were very good clients. So I would obviously take their orders. They were never like, I need this for tomorrow, but I would always make sure to let them know, like I've got you down in the books. Thank you for paying your deposit. Um, just so you know, I'm starting to book out one month in advance until it started becoming a reality. So it comes back to the concept of manifestation where you manifest something that you want. And I wanted this so badly to be booked out three, four weeks or like one month or two months in advance that suddenly it became a reality. And I remember this was at the end of 2016. So at the start of 2017, I was already booking out for February and March. And this, I cannot tell you how, um, I can't stress this enough where I tell you that you need to demand your standards of what type of client you want. Ultimately, you're the one that is taking the orders. You're the one that's making this art piece for your client. And at the same time, you also have to provide quality because you can't just say, I wanna get paid $1,000 for this cake and then provide a cake that is, I don't know, $50 quality. Your quality with your standards and your goals all have to align so that both parties are satisfied at the end of the transaction so that you can continue to build um, so that you can continue to build loyal clients, clients that are going to return, clients that are going to book you months in advance. I even had a lady that said, I love you so much that I'm not going to recommend you and I'll just pay you for whatever else you were gonna make this month. Um, and you can manifest that, you can manifest that, but you also have to realize what you are doing wrong and what you need to change. Alrighty, everyone, so those were my three tips or the three things that I did in Very Cherry Cakes in my business when I first started to help me promote the business and to help me get those loyal clients that I really wanted. I hope that you learned something or I hope that a few of these tips you take on and you do yourself. Remember that your business is not gonna grow overnight. You have to be patient, you have to be consistent, and you have to be willing to put in the work 
Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Don't forget to share this video with a friend. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you're struggling with or how your business is evolving or how you plan to change your business in 2021. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you next time. Bye.